In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of string methods. We've already taken a look at length, index of, and char at. Now we're going to look at substring. And you might notice if you watch the other three videos that I've added equals here. We're going to talk about that as well. But in this video, we're going to talk about substring. So substring allows us to extract part of a string. And that doesn't mean that it's removed from the original. Strings are, um, we call them immutable. And that means they can't be changed. So when we use the substring methods, we are not changing a string. We are simply copying part of that string. So let's take a look at this one. Let's say we want to pull out part of a string from this string I'm calling other. And it is set equal to the string testing. And so we can say other dot substring. Now, the first argument to the substring method indicates which character we are going to start at. And with testing, it has the positions 0, because the first character is always at position 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let's say we want to start at position 2. And I want to extract st, for example. With the substring method, the first argument indicates the index where you're going to start, and the second argument indi indicates the index where you're going to end, but it doesn't include the index where you're going to end. So in this case, if I say other.substring2, it starts at position 2, and it goes up to but not including position 4. So then this string variable new one would then contain the address of the string st. That's what's extracted from other.substring2, 4. What's extracted is st. Let's try another one. Um, let's say new one is now equal to, let's take a look at Susie Q up here. So we want to set this equal to name. I'm just going to, oh, heavens, look what I did. I made a mistake. And no whiteout. Here we go, like that. I'm just going to set this equal to name dot substring and I'll start at position um, 8 and I'll go up to position 12. So what would that be? Let's put in our little indices here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 is the space 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if I'm going from 8 to 12 new one would no longer be referencing st. It would now be referencing a string that starts at position 8, so it gets that q. Position 9 is the u, 10 is the e, 11 is the u, but we're not going to include the e at position 12 because we go up to but not including that second one. So new one will now be set equal to qe. That's the two argument version of substring. There's also a one argument version. So let's say we're setting new one equal to um, name dot substring. In the one argument version of substring, we can, position, we can provide the index where we want to start or the position where we want to start and leave off the second subscript. And what's going to happen there is we'll have new one will now contain the address of where the string starting at 8, and where does it end? All the way at the end. So when you're using substring and it only has one argument, it goes from that index all the way to the end of the string, like that. Let's try one more. Let's say we have new one is equal to name dot substring and let's say we put in there name.length. Now you might assume that this will grab you the last character in the string, the E, but it doesn't. Because name.length contains the number of characters that are there, and in SUSYQ we have 13 characters. So if you're calling substring 
with an index that's beyond the end of the string, you do get a string index out of bounds error, and that's an exception. Your program will have a runtime error, and it will no longer continue to operate. Um, if you want to get the last character, you have to say the name of the string dot length minus one, and that will get us that last character. The E will now be stored in new one. I hope you found this video helpful.